Shalom, my friends, from here in Israel. Uh, today you are with me, joining me on a very, very special and holy mission, I would say. Um, I'm here doing what I do almost every single day, which is delivering life-saving aid to the neediest, poorest people throughout Israel. I'll tell you a little bit about the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, which my father, Rabbi Eckstein, started 30 years ago. 30 years ago, there wasn't a way that Christians around the world could tangibly bless and help Israel in prayer, in advocacy, in tangible aid. And that's why my father started the fellowship, to unite Christians and Jews in their shared love for Israel and the Jewish people and to give them an opportunity to help. Now, the fellowship throughout Israel has over 450 projects. We're the largest philanthropic organization in all of Israel. And how awesome is that? That it's Christians and Jews outside of Israel who are helping Israel more than anyone else in the entire world world. Every single day we provide thousands of meals to needy elderly and children. We have soup kitchens. We have 4,000 volunteers who deliver life-saving aid, prepared meals to elderly inside their home and sit with them and listen to them. We have projects for Holocaust survivors. And so throughout the year the fellowship is active. My father Rabbi Eckstein is always traveling around the world trying to find more ways to, to add advocate for Israel and the Jewish people to gather the support for Christians and Jews together to stand for the Holy Land, to stand for these biblical values. And my father was recently in Brazil where we set up offices, in Korea. Now he's traveling abroad to set up uh, Aliyah, a way for Jewish people who are persecuted in the Middle East, in the former Soviet Union, to come home to Israel on fellowship Aliyah flights. That's what we call on wings of eagles. But we're in a very special time now, I'm not sure if you know about it, where it's almost Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And we're in the last month of the Hebrew year called Elul. What Elul stands for is Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li, which means I am to my beloved and my beloved is unto me. This is the last month of the year that we are closest to God before the New Year starts. Now, how do the Jewish people bring in the New Year? It's not the way that the world brings in the Gregorian New Year. It's not with fireworks and with drinking and with partying and going out to bars. The Jewish people bring in the New Year in prayer. We bring in the New Year by eating rimonim, pomegranates, which is the uh, fruit of the season, by bringing in the new fruit, by thanking God for giving us the blessing of having a New Year because it's not a given. We celebrate the new year with family and friends and we pray to God that the next year will be just as blessed as the last and even more. We pray for community. We pray for the world. We pray for Israel. We don't only pray for ourselves and that's how the Jewish people welcome in this new year. But let me ask you a question friends. How do you welcome in the new year with hope and with joy when you don't have enough money for food? That's the situation for so many people here in Israel thousands of people who live below the poverty line. Now, let me explain to you the situation in Israel. That's a little bit different from where I was born in America. In Israel, we don't have a national food program. When I was raised in America, people that were poor at least had food cards, right? That at least they won't go hungry. But we don't have a food program in Israel. There is no national food program that says, even if you're poor, the poor elderly, the poor children, that you will have food. And that's how we come to the situation of extreme poverty. Children who go to sleep hungry, Holocaust survivors, one in three of them who live below the poverty line, which is around $450 a month. And so the fellowship is there around the holidays to bring love and hope and blessings to uh, we want to specifically focus on those people who need it the most from the Bible. And so what does the Bible say is tzedakah, charity? There are amazing works now of charity across the world of giving out computers and giving out scholarship. And that's wonderful. But the Bible tells us what biblical charity is. Biblical charity is feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, sheltering the poor, 
And God says specifically that there are people who are closest to his heart, and those are, does anybody know? You could write it in the comments. Who are the people that are closest to God's heart? The orphans and the widows. And so as we bring in this new year, as we get ready to bring in this new year, the fellowship is providing food and clothing to the single mothers, the children, and the orphans. Every single orphan in Israel is getting a card from the fellowship that they could go shopping at the mall and pick out their own clothing, many of them for the first time in their entire life, that they're going to have the ability to go and buy new clothing. Every single orphan in Israel will get this. And do you know what we tell them? That this is a gift of love from Christians and Jews around the world who want them to have a happy and healthy new year. And what this does to a child, to know that they're cared about, to know that they're loved, to know that they're not alone, and to be able to walk into the mall and buy new clothing, and then show up at synagogue on the Jewish New Year, on Rosh Hashanah, and pray to God with all their hearts and know that God listens, because God has presented them through the fellowship with the gift of clothing that they never dreamed would be possible. How many of you take that for granted, going into a store and buying new clothing, or buying your children, or grand, many of you take that for granted? And so it's amazing that the fellowship is there to these orphans that don't have that, don't have a grandmother, or an aunt, or a mother, or a father, or a grandfather to bring them to get new clothing for the holiday. We, friends, are their parents. We are their grandparents. We are their guardians just as God has called us to be. And we do the same thing with food for the poorest single mothers throughout Israel, along with the elderly. God tells these people, I will not abandon you. And we are there to tell them that that is true and be God's hands to show them that this is possible. Hope is possible. They never dreamed they would have food and a meal for the holidays. And we are there to tell them God could do anything. And so I'm here about to bring a food card to a single mother with two young children. This mother, her name is Hani, and she's an amazing woman. She works full time in order to support her family. She's a receptionist at a building company, and she leaves early in the morning, gets her kids ready for school, and drops them off, and get, does everything she can to give them love and give them a good life. She comes home late at night after working a full day and gives them hugs and kisses, but... She makes minimum wage, which in Israel is around $5 an hour. And it's not enough to provide food for her children throughout the year, let alone on the holidays. And so what I'm about to do is go and give Chani and her children a food card. This single mother with two children who works hard, who deserves the best. And we're going to go right now and give her a food card and tell her she could go with her children to pick out the food that they like to eat best. That's why we don't give food boxes, because we want to do this in a dignified way. We want to give them dignity. When you bring a food box, you're not including the children's favorite meal and their favorite foods. You're not including everything that's special to them for the holiday. You're bringing the basics and they have to make do with that. But what we want them to have is not only the basics, but their favorite food to bring them joy, to bring them happiness, to bring them faith, so that they can go on Rosh Hashanah, on the Jewish New Year, and say, praise God for millions of Christians and Jews around the world who have not forgotten me. And this has showed me that God has not forgotten me. And so this Rosh Hashanah, I want you to remember that we are doing this on your behalf. We're bringing to single mothers in Israel, to every single orphan in Israel, to hundreds of thousands, literally 120,000 people in need in Israel and the former Soviet Union on your behalf, the gift of food and of clothing and of comfort on behalf of Christians and Jews around the world because we're united. As the Bible says, as Psalm says, Hine matov umanaim shevet achim gam yachad. How good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together. That's what God wants from us. And when we dwell together, when we stand together, then what we could do are miracles bring biblical prophecy to fruition. When we stand together, we bring Jewish people from Ukraine, from Iran, from Russia, home to Israel on wings of eagles, just as the prophet saw thousands of years ago. Over 2,000 years ago, the prophet sat in Jerusalem and said, 
one day the Jewish people will come home. They'll come home from all four corners of the earth. They'll come home from the biblical land of the north, as some people call Russia and the former Soviet Union, from Iran, from Iraq, what's Babylon, that they'll come home to Israel. And for 2,000 years, the Jewish people didn't have Israel. Israel was called Palestine, and there's always Jews in Israel. My family goes back 11 generations in Jerusalem. And so there's always been Jews in Israel, but it hasn't been under Jewish rule, which gave way to the Holocaust and all of the other persecution happening around the world to Jewish people because we haven't had our homeland. And as Jews were being persecuted and chased out and killed, the prayer and the hope was in the Bible and the words of the prophets that one day the Jewish people will go home to Israel. And we had to hold on to that with faith because we looked around at world events and there was no such thing as Israel. Israel wasn't safe for the Jews. Israel was under Arab rule and there were lots of different killings and things happening that persecuted the Jews even in Israel. But we held on to the words of the Bible, held on to the words of the prophets that the Jewish people will be reunited with the land. And this, my friends, is biblical prophecy coming to fruition. I'm standing here in Israel. I have four children born in Israel. Imagine what the prophets would say about that. And we're living here surrounded by en enemies, but we're living in peace because the guardian of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. We raise our eyes up to the heavens from where does our salvation comes? It comes from Hashem, maker of heaven and earth. And that's why we are here. That's why the fellowship exists. Because when Christians and Jews come together in shared values, in unity, in love for God, when we come together, biblical prophecy comes to fruition. And so, as I said, the fellowship is giving out, distributing over 120,000 pieces of aid to Jews in need in Israel and in the former Soviet Union. To every single orphan in Israel, we're providing clothing. To single mothers, the poorest single mothers, we're providing food. To elderly, they're getting food boxes and prepared meals. And in the former Soviet Union, next week I'm going over to Ukraine to see our operations there. I'm going to be flying home from Ukraine on an Aliyah flight on wings of eagles bringing Jews from Ukraine home to Israel. And I'll be following up with you from there where you could watch that live as well. But for now, the fellowship, my father, Rabbi Eckstein, were getting ready for the holidays of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. How do you get ready for the holidays? Not only by uh, trying to purify ourselves and our thoughts and our prayers, but also by helping others. Because God says there are three ways that we should start the year. There are three ways that leads to God's heart being softened and that he could totally forgive us for everything. Teshuvah, repentance, tefillah, prayer, and tzedakah, charity. That's how we bring in the new year. The new year is in two and a half weeks, the Jewish Hebrew New Year, and we have to prepare for it in these three ways. Repentance, prayer, and charity. And so come with me. Uh, you see that these buildings that where I am, I'm in a very poor neighborhood uh, where all the buildings, this is actually public housing, where you see that the uh, windows are broken and the, the houses aren't painted and things are falling apart. They're tiny apartments where this is where the poorest people live. Uh, this is public housing of Israel. And I'm gonna go in right now, come with me, as we go and give Chani, a single mother with two young children, um, a food card. And she's gonna use this food card to go and uh, shop with her children to buy the food that they like best in honor of the holiday. So I'm walking in now. You could see the thing out. Shalom. Mashlomech. Good evening. How are you doing? Good evening. Good evening. We're, we're live here on Facebook with Jews and Christians who love Israel and who are helping Thank the people of Israel. Much. Thank you very much. What's your name? Faina. Faina. And where are you from, Faina? Where are you from? I'm, I, I am from Russia, from Siberia. You're from Siberia? Yes. Wow. And when did you come to Israel? I came to Israel uh, by, How many years ago? Around 20 years ago? I On the Big Aliyah? But I, I will tell. In uh, 1999. In 1990. And how is it in Israel? 
How do you like it in Israel? Oh, all my children are here and all my family is here. Of course we like. You are blessed. And so you must be a Holocaust survivor also. Were you in Siberia during the Holocaust? What do you want to ask Dur me? During I, the Holocaust, were you in Siberia still? What is ah, Holocaust? Holocaust? Yeah. Oh. During World War II? When there was Holocaust, I was a little child and I was, I was born in Ukraine and I was living in Kharkov. Ah. In Kharkov. And from Kharkov, we went to Stalingrad, which is on the Volga. Uh -huh. And after that, we came to Siberia. Wow, and so you were running away from persecution during the war. Uh, you, 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 you had to escape because it was dangerous in Ukraine during the war? Is that we why you escaped only because of the fact that my father was working on the, in the, at the factory which made the um, tractors. tractors. Ah, so you're, and oh, these wow. tractors was uh, decided to make uh, tanks on Volga and they went to Stalingrad and oh, it is very difficult to speak about these events I can't speak about this and only because of it we are alive because of what? because of the work that he was doing on the tractors it's a story of miracles it sounds like God was with you Oh, I don't understand you. What God, did you say? That God was with you. It was on miracles that you survived. It's a great miracle, of course. It's a miracle. Because many people wanted to leave Ukraine. It was impossible. There was no transport. And if there was no transport, the people couldn't escape Ukraine in 1941. In June. You are from... Television. I this is this is people all across the world who love Israel and who want to see what Israel is like. And now they got to see, now you got to see, friends, what Israel is like. These are the heroes that Israel is made up of. This is a hero of Israel. Can we get some uh, hearts for her? Can we get some hearts across the screen for this hero of Israel? A Holocaust survivor from Ukraine who survived the Holocaust who was uh, survived on miracles and God's grace and is now here in Israel with her grandchildren, with her children, about to celebrate the new year. Look at all those people who love you. <laughs> My dear. <laughs> oh. Well, look, there are so many people that love you and I know that all of you will be praying for her as well. What's your name? Faina. Faina. Pray for Faina that she should be healthy and happy and strength this new year, this new Jewish year. Uh, people like, do you, have you ever heard of Hakaren Liadidut? People, people, health for you, health and happiness. Health and be happiness. Be healthy and wealthy. Amen, amen. <laughs> Faina, God bless you and bye, Shana Tova. Bye, 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 bye. Shana Tova. And we're going to go now, we're going to help, there's a single mother who lives here, we're going to go help her with food for Rosh Hashanah. A good idea. Yeah. Very good idea. God bless Thank you, Faina. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, welcome to Israel, friends. That's the reality in Israel, where wherever you go, there's people that want to talk to you, share their story with you, and the stories that... You could find just walking into a random building in Israel are unbelievable because you know what? Almost every single elderly in Israel is a Holocaust survivor. They came from Germany or Ukraine. And so every single elderly here has a story just like Faina had. And that is why, imagine Faina not having enough money to buy food for the Jewish New Year. Well, one in three Holocaust survivors, that's the situation for them. And that is why the fellowship is giving food to these Holocaust survivors, to these elderly, with your help in Israel. And those Holocaust survivors who aren't as lucky and blessed as Faina, 
who are stuck in the former Soviet Union still. They need our help. And so there's a link on this video. I want you to go and tell Faina and people like Faina, we love you. We want you to have a happy and healthy new year. And here is a uh, gift of love from Christians and Jews who love you. Now we're going to go on from the Holocaust survivor and elderly to the single mother named Hani. So let's see. All right. You just one second. All right. We're waiting by Hani. Hi. Hello. Mashlames. Hi. Anachnu Po. We're here with the, the card for the holidays for yes. Rosh Hashanah. And Thank we wanted you. just to say hello to you Hi. and wish you a happy new year. Hi. Happy new year. <laughs> and just to tell you how many people love you um, and are praying ev- for you. Everybody, I say thank you. Thank you for family, from the children. And you give me surprise. Thank you. Very, very thank you. It's our pleasure and our blessing. And this is going to, with this card, you could go with the children and buy whatever food they want for Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. Whatever food they Thank want you. for the new holiday, you could make them their favorite meal, and I, we know that you work very hard. You just got back from work. Thank you. <laughs> and we're here with you, and we love you. We want to just wish you a very happy new year. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to show you an adorable boy. Ben Kama who Ben Shesh. This is a six year old boy who you are helping, can help, is adorable. His name is Jonathan, Yonatan. Yeah. And this is Chani, the mother. Look at all those hearts across the screen. Those are all the people that love you. <laughs> right? He's cute. I just explained to him in Hebrew that all the hearts and smiley faces are people that love him. He said, thank you so much. And a happy new year. All right, friends, this has been amazing. I'll continue to do this at more places throughout Israel, just as I've promised. And I encourage you, with your help, we could meet, reach even more people, like Faina, the Holocaust survivor, like Chani, like Yonatan. There are Jewish people here in Israel who want to celebrate Rosh Hashanah in a positive, happy way, and you could be part of that. So pray and act. And tune in soon. I'll be doing more videos. I love you all. Thank you for all of the hearts. They're making me really happy. I don't know why virtual hearts are making me happy, but they really are. So thank you. And God bless you all. Shana Tova, Shana Tova. Happy and healthy new year. And thank you for joining from here in Israel. Shalom.